challenge each other and challenge one another, you know, we may think, wait a minute, but Lord, look, personally, me one day, I'm going to stand before the Lord and the Lord say, well, David, why did you not challenge people more? Why did you not do that or that? So, um, <laughs> uh, I've, I've got an envelope there. No, no, no checks in there. Um, with, with just our vision and what we believe, well, again, we've had that before, but it's good to remind ourselves what we believe, that's our foundation, where, what we want to be, house of prayer, a Pentecostal church, filled with God, filled with the Spirit, reaching the lost, and all those kind of things. But you know what? I thought, well, that's okay, but I, 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 put, I put a letter together. Jackie wasn't particularly impressed with it. I, well, difficult to impress after 30 years, I know, near enough. Um, but I just wanted to put, it's not a great letter, but I just want to put some thoughts down to, you see, that's okay, but how do we get there? It's okay having a vision, but how do we actually work that out? And um, so I put something together just really to, to just outline what I, by, by what I want to do personally and uh, what we are. Um, it's interesting, if you've heard that before, you, uh, about the four people, the four people, everybody, somebody, Anybody and nobody. Four people. It was an important job to do, Bethany. And everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could do. Yeah, and uh, we've got to again remember why we are here. We are here. So that is just a, an outline of, of my commitments, just to really see, change our perspective. Why? Because we time by eternity. Remember, we said that before. Get in a hold of our lives and just really challenging us when we are perspective. Our relationship with the Lord—that's the most important. To know Him, to know Him, to know Him. How is that with you? And um, you know, that's worked out in our lives. How is your relationship with the Lord? Because then it's worked out in our relationship with others. And really then, how are we serving the Lord? How are we, how are we serving the Lord? Great question. I, I, we, we looked at these four. And um, it challenges me to my core because we realize how far we've gone um, when, we, when we looked at um, how the Methodist church started, and how every church started, really, with a zeal for the Lord and a zeal for the, for the congregation and the fellowship. And uh, the Methodist church really thrived with their, with their small groups, getting people together and really challenging them. And um, we, we've looked at some of these questions before, but some of the questions they, they could ask as they got together in the week, um, obviously, to get into, into, the, into the gathering you had to be saved, and they'd be asked about that. Um, and then some of the questions, do you, desire to, do you desire to be told your faults? There we are. To get, to get into, the, into, the, into the gathering, this was. Um, do, you, do you desire that every one of you should tell from time to time whatever is in your heart concerning you? I know that. But let me tell you, these were the four questions that were mandatory. Mandatory. Every gathering to every person. What known sins have you committed since our last meeting? What temptations have you met with? How were you delivered? And what have you thought, said, or done of which you doubt whether it is sin or not? Now, that is a, that's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? To what we do sometimes. Um, and this is what God longs for. God designs is, is for us to grab a hold of ourselves and say, Lord, we need you. We need you. And we, we to amble along, isn't it? And uh, so my question is, to me and to you, how about you who moved in the gifts of the Spirit? When was the last time you moved in the gifts of the Spirit? Now, quite a few of us have moved in the gifts of the Spirit. When was the last time you moved? Good question. And, and, and we, we get a little bit, ooh, we're going to be a little bit uncomfortable. You see, if we don't get, if we can't, as, as a family, the Bible says we are a body, a family, and all these, these uh, metaphors the Bible uses to, to gather us and to say we're belonging to each other. So um, it's no good saying, well, I'm not happy about that. Because, well, it's, it's, it's called toughness. 
Yeah, we'd like to get rid of some of our family, but we can't because they have family, didn't they? <laughs> they have family. And, and that's, as, as the guy was stranded on the, on the uh, desert island for 25 years, and uh, the, he, was, he, was, he was rescued. And they said, oh, you, I see you've been busy. You've got three buildings. He said, yeah. So that building there, he said, that's, that's where I lived. Oh, he said. He said, what's this building here? So that's the church I go to. Oh, excellent. What's his other building, his third building? He said, that's the church I used to go to. And, uh, you know, again, that, that's sometimes we forget, we forget covenant. And uh, that's one of my words in, in this little letter that, you see, it, it's all built on covenant. The Bible says God covenants to us. He doesn't have to do that, does he? A covenant is not a contract. Remember, it's not a contract. A contract, if, if one side breaks, it is broken. The Bible says God covenants to us, and even when we mess up, he's still covenanted, promised to us. That's amazing, isn't it? And when we understand that he's covenanted to us, and we are covenanted to then each other. Why? Because we are, the Bible says, what are we? We are a nation under God. And the God, that's America. But we are, the Bible calls us it. That's our identity. We've got a passport, haven't we? Thankfully, we'll just get a British passport soon, eventually, when we sort it out, although that's dragging on forever. Um, and we would say, what's your nationality? Oh, well, I'm British and Welsh. Welsh, British, British, Welsh, depends uh, where we are, isn't it? Um, how, how you want to call it? That's our nationality. That's my citizenship. But the Bible says my citizenship is in heaven. I am just passing through. I am a pilgrim passing through. And you see, when we begin to understand, when we, that's, that's uh, uh, in one, one sense, the Bible says the job to equip us, to equip us. And there's the, the pattern, the works of service, the unity, the, the building up, and, and to not to be tossed away. When we understand that we are passing through, our priorities change. Our perspectives change. And that's why when... Uh, this letter says, be a part, a partner, be a partner. And, and, and re really then our priorities as a partner in the work of the Lord, because we haven't got membership, there's issues in membership because members, we think we've got rights and all that instead of responsibilities. And um, uh, as, as someone said, this is my church. It is composed of people just like me. It will be friendly if I am. It will do a great work. If I work, it will make generous gifts to many causes if I am generous. It will bring others into fellowship if I bring them. Its seats will be filled if I fill them. It will be a church of loyalty and love and faith and service if I who make it what it is. I'm filled with these. Therefore, with God's help, I dedicate my task of being all these things I want my church to be. You see, it will only be what we personally are. Isn't it? And our job is to stir us. We are a nation. My citizenship is not you, British. Really, my citizenship is in heaven. Why I'm passing through and going very quickly, of course, as we've said many times. We are pilgrims passing through. We are a family. We're belonging. We are of the bloodline of the. We have the same father. I remember telling you before when I, w I was praying many years ago about a particular person. Lord, they. they, they are, they're really bugging me. They're really hard work. And I, I'm your son. You're my father. And just a whisper into my heart, I'm their father too. That's interesting. I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Sort it out then. Sort it out. And you see, that's, that's the power of getting before the Lord. Coming together. Let us. Let us come together and stir one another on to love and good deeds. He said, let us. Be careful about what we, uh, about each other's hearts. Look and see and search and speak the truth. Careful in love. Speak the truth in love. We are a family. We are family. We have the same father. We are DNA. And even though um, there's squabbles in families, and sadly some families don't make up, but that's not how it should be. Um, uh, families are still family, isn't it? They'll still be knocking the door for the legacy at the end of the day. No, no, at the end of the day. We are a family. They um, complained to Wigglesworth once. Um, when he was uh, uh, 
being more, uh, I, I, what's the word, committed in a sense, faithful to the, to the people of the church, his spiritual family, that is his natural family, his natural family were complaining. And they said, Smith, what are you doing? Blood is thicker than water. And uh, Smith, it's awesome, good, good uh, quick quips back. He said, yeah, but spirit is thicker than blood. Spirit is thicker than blood. Because you know what? Look at the people around you. And uh, in a million years' time, they'll still be there. Woo-hoo! Why? If we are the Lord's in, a, in eternity, we're still going to be together. Now, we hope we're going to take, and we pray and for all our families to take them, every one of them, isn't it? But in, in one sense, when we die, that relationship will be broken for however ever long until we get the glory. So that's a natural broken, but we, forever. A family, we are a family. We are a body. We are a body. Um, and it's interesting that every part of the body has got to do its work to function. Everybody has got to do its work. You think about, you think about eating. Um, the, your nose smells the cook, cooking. Careful now. Or the burning. Doesn't matter. Your nose smells it. You come in, you see it. And then your hands chop it up or saw it up, depending on how, how, how well it's cooked. And then you, you, your hands put it into, into your mouth, and your mouth and your teeth, they choose it. And then you swallow it. And you know what? We, we just take all that for granted. But if you know what? Down the esophagus, it's an amazing process. How those muscles of the esophagus pushes it down into the stomach. You've got, a, you've got two pipes there, haven't you? And you know if you go down the other pipe, the trachea, you're, but you've got a flap of skin there. It's amazing design. And we just take it for granted. We eat. But let me tell you, if you've got a, a problem with that, if you've had a stroke or other things, and uh, that's, that's a real challenge to eat. And, and, and it goes down and it goes into your body. And you know, every part, every part does its part to function for that food to be eaten, that food to be digested, and then all the goodness taken out and then excreted. Every part has got to do its work. One part fails. One part doesn't do its job. And then the whole process falls down. I said before, but how, how, how do we save someone? I'm, I'm walking around the pond. I hear someone call. I look and I see them. I'm saying, I'm sorry, I can't swim. Well, I can't, so they'd be in trouble. But if I could swim, I, I would hear, I would see, and then my whole, whole body would jump in and swim and drag them to the side. See, if one of those senses, if I, if I was deaf, I wouldn't hear the cry. If I was blind, I wouldn't see where they are. If I was, you know, not fit and healthy, I would, certainly wouldn't jump in. I would throw the, throw the what do you call it, the, the boy or the hoop, jump onto that. Um, so every part has got to do fun. It's it, it, Back in 1925, evolutionists said there were 180 vestigial uh, things in your body, uh, which meant 180 things that were not important or they were leftovers from evolution. That's what they said. 180. Um, today, you know how many they say are vestigial? Don't need it? Don't know what they do? Zero. Even the appendix. We can live without it, but when it's there, it produces antibodies that goes into the blood that protects, protects the, 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 uh, the bowel system. It's amazing, isn't it? What, what we think is not important, what we think... And we can look around and say, ah, everybody, everybody, if you don't do your part, okay, the church will, sub, will function substandard. And then that changes the perspective. Now, now, when we just amble along then, we think, wait a minute now, you, 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 what are you doing to serve the Lord? What are you doing? For us who are young, we need to get the burden on our back and carry it. For you who are a bit more mature, your burden is on your knees, to pray over it, both vital, both, in fact, without, without those on the, our knees, we can forget it. Paul says, join with me in my ministry by praying for me. Isn't that amazing? He understood that, that if they weren't praying for him, his ministry was going to be substandard. In fact, his ministry would not go anywhere. Join with me, which meant we are together, the family, the body, joining together, the power of 
uh, what God has done. What God's done. We are the bride, of course, and that talks talks about um, uh, purity and holiness and uh, keeping a, a focus. We can easily get distracted, but the Church of the Living God, if we hold on to the Word of God, the vital things, uh, Acts two forty two, on those things that we need to keep praying, preaching, praising. Very important. If those are held on to, held on to jealously, God will bless. God will bless. So we are, we are longing for those things, to, to be productive. Because you know what? One day we'll stand before the Lord. Every one of us. And what have we done for him? How have we served him? How will we, how will we serve the Lord? And how do we do that? We serve the Lord through the local church. Through the local church. We serve, serve through the local church into the community. That's why... It's good to be, and absolutely vital to be in the local church where God has placed us. When's the last time you uh, shared the gospel with somebody? When was the last time you fasted for something or somebody, or just fasted? When was the last time the word of the Lord spoke to you as you read the word? Spoke into your heart. When's the last time you put something aside to spend more time with the Lord? When was the last time you gave sacrificially? What does the Lord want me to do? What how does the Lord want me to serve? When was the last time you really asked that and uh, waited for an answer and said, "Lord, anything, anything, anywhere, anything, anywhere." It's a lovely story about a, um, a church, and they were um, they had a building fund. Although someone said um, the pastor stood up one day, he said, um, "Yes, uh, our building fund." The good news is, he said, "The building fund has been uh, the money for the building fund has been we've got it." And the church, "Well, well done." He said, "The bad news is, he says, in your pockets." <laughs> but this was a church, and um, they invited a minister uh, to come and. Um, uh, they said to him, uh, uh, a doctor he was of some description, they said, look, he said, um, we've got a bit new building, he said, and we've got to raise 6,500 by tomorrow. He said, and we, he said, we want you to um, take the offering up after. He said, well, I'm, he said, well I'm, I'm just coming visiting preacher, he said. You're asking me to raise 6,500. Anyway, he preached, and um, reluctantly, he began to make the uh, appeal for money. And they, 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 he said, uh, They've called me and they've asked me, um, we need six and a half thousand by tomorrow. Will you provide it? And uh, he said it began the most slowest and most reluctant uh, shame offering, he said, that he'd ever, ever witnessed. And after 30 minutes, he kept going, well done. They had 3,000 pounds. And uh, he looked at him and said, what, what do you want me to do? He said, I haven't got three and a half thousand to give him. I'm waiting to be paid from you. No. Um, and just that moment... A little woman at the back of the church stood up and uh, addressed her husband, who was at the front. Charlie, Charlie, I wondered, if you were willing for us to give our little cottage to this building fund, because we've paid it off, and uh, we were offered three and a half thousand dollars in cash for it yesterday. We were told we could get it at the back at any time in 10 days if we would choose to make the trade. Charlie, I wondered, if you would be willing for us to give our little house to Christ, that this house may be free. When we remember, Charlie, that Christ gave his life for us, I wonder if we ought to give this little house to him. Charlie responded, Jenny, dear, I was thinking the very same thing. We will give the three and a half thousand dollars. Silence went over the congregation. Tears, brokenness. In, that, in the next five minutes, three and a half thousand were given by the people. People would come there just as a special service, an invitation. Got saved. Got saved. Because they realized that someone had understood the gift of salvation. What Christ had done for them. And remember, everything we have is just a gift from God can't take it with us. It's an impossible thing to take it with us. So it's his anyway. And you know, when we begin to see, begin to remember who we are 
and begin to stir our hearts to say, Lord, my, my priority is time with you, serving you, ch being, changed, being changed for those around me and serving him in everything. Not forgetting, not forgetting our purpose. A man visited Atlanta and uh, he was just looking for a restaurant and he went through, remember the yellow pages? Don't have that anymore, do you? Kids can't remember yellow pages, can they? You remember Yellow Pages? He was looking for a restaurant, and he came across a restaurant called the Church of the Holy, uh, the Church of God Grill. The Church of God Grill. He thought, well, that's an interesting, funny name. So he rang him up. He said, you a restaurant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, can I book a table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, what, what's his name? He said, the Church of God Grill. He said, oh, they said, it's quite interesting. He said, well, before, before we were a restaurant, we were a little mission. And uh, uh, after the Sunday service, we used to uh, do a chicken dinner. And uh, we used to, you know, sell it and, and make some money for the church and for the mission. And it, it, it went so well that we, we began to cut back on the services and, and begin to serve, serve the dinner. So much so, we stopped having services and we just used to do dinners. And he said, it's been going really well. And we thought we'd just keep the same name. And you know what? We can forget why we are here. We are here to know the Lord, to bless each, to build each other up, because we are a building. We are connected to build each, to edify each other, and to challenge each other, to change and cultivate each other, but also not forgetting, the Bible says, follow me, then go and tell the gospel. Go and live the gospel out. See, we serve in the local church, but we come here to be built up, then to go out and live it out in our workplaces, in our schools, in our colleges. People seeing us and seeing the difference that Jesus makes in us. Or today, when we get challenged. See, we, we, we can do two, of two things, can't we? We can, we can, we can retract. But the Bible says, listen, my response and my responsibility. See, out, why, are we, why are we here as a body? We're not, we're not a social club. Okay, we're not, no, no. We're a body of Christ, the building of Christ. What God wants us to be, what are you going to do for him? How are you going to serve him? Ultimately, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Temple of the Holy Spirit. Building, God's building, but we are building as well, edifying each other. And then allowing God to do a work in us. This morning, when we, when we begin to get challenged. Oh, remember, Dave, why are you challenging me? Well, I watch over your souls. To give an account. That's awesome. Because one day I'll stand before the Lord. And I don't know about you, but that's an awesome challenge. And he'll say, Dave, why? Why? And I'll say, well, I wanted to just have a, a, a nice, comfortable, comfortable church when there's, when there's lost souls being lost and, and there's people in the church not functioning, not being stirred up, just ambling along. And God says, no, 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 we don't amble along anymore. Get a hold of what do you, where do you want me? Ask, Lord, where do you want me and what do you want me to do? Lord, I will serve you. Our first and foremost is to know him, to know him. That's the most important thing, relationship with him. Out of that, everything, everything flows. Our, our worship our coming together, our service, our relationships, they, they are enhanced. Why? Because now I'm living like Christ. I'm living like Christ. So, so the relationships in the house, in the work, in the church, totally different. Easy? No, 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 no. God will definitely send the issues and difficulties and people across your path. Why? Because he's, he's changing us. We are guaranteed difficulties. Oh, dear. We are guaranteed them. So we know him. We are leaning upon him. We are just holding on to him more than anything else. Let's pray and let's break bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You, you're a great God. Lord, you, your heart is, you created the church, Lord, to be a people of God, to be a bride of Christ, to be, to be all those things that we are we interlinked with you. You are the head, but we are the body to show you and to demonstrate you in the church and then out in the highways and byways. 
Father, we say sorry. We have to say sorry that we are not what we should be. Lord, we have failed in many ways. Lord, we have not functioned as we should. And we say sorry for that. But our heart's cry is that we will be, Lord, the people of God with each other and in our community. Lord, to reach this community for you. Help us, we day, pray today in your name. Lord, as you challenge us, as you really take hold of our lives to uh, make a change in our priorities. Lord, we pray in your name, in your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Christ, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess as he who promises faithful. Let us consider, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some is in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another, one another, and all the more as we see the day of his coming approach.